As far as acts which invalidate the fast, they are listed in the Quran as well as in the Hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number two, verse number 187, associate with them, that's your wife, and take whatever Allah gives you from them, that is the offspring, and eat and drink till the white thread of dawn appears different than the black thread and then you fast and complete your fast till the nightfall so here we get the three categories eating drinking and sexual intercourse and there are various other categories which are prohibited in the Sahih Hadith broadly if you list the things that break the fast there are approximately 10 different things which break the fast and you can categorize them into two categories the first category is that which breaks the fast when we take it inside the body. In them, there are four things. The first is eating and drinking. Second is anything that falls in the same category as eating or drinking. Third is taking medicines, opals or injections which are in the form of nourishment or somewhat similar to eating and drinking including blood transfusion. The fourth is somewhat similar to kidney dialysis where the blood is taken out, it's purified and some nutrients are put into it and put back. The second category, that which comes out from the body, there are six things in them. Number one is sexual intercourse. Number two is masturbation. Number three is menstruation. Number four is postnatal bleeding. Number five is deliberate vomiting and number six is letting out blood somewhat similar to cupping or something similar to that so in all there are ten things which invalidate the fast of those ten things you've mentioned could you now tell us which is considered to be the most serious and sinful act which invalidates the fast the act which is the most sinful and most serious amongst all of them which invalidated the fast it is sexual intercourse that when you have sexual intercourse and when the two private parts meet then your fast is invalidated whether ejaculation takes place or not and you have to repent for that you have to complete the fast for that day and you have to make it up later and you have to pay a penalty that's kafara according to the Sahih Hadith in which a beloved Prophet said it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari volume number 3 in the book of fasting Hadith number 1936 where a man comes to the Prophet and says that I am ruined O Prophet I am ruined the Prophet says what is the matter the man says I had sex with my wife while I was fasting so the Prophet says that can you free a slave so the man says no I cannot then the Prophet asks, can you fast consecutively for two months? Can you fast continuously for 60 days? The man says, no, I cannot. Then the Prophet says that, can you feed 60 poor people? And the man says, no, and the Hadith continues. In short, we come to know from this Hadith that if any person does a sexual intercourse, it is one of the major sins. It is the most serious and sinful amongst all the things that break the fast. The person who does this sin, he should immediately repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for forgiveness. He should complete his fast for that day and make up for that fast later on after Ramadan. And he has to pay a penalty. And the penalty we come to know from the hadith is that he either frees a slave if he can, if he does not have the money to free the slave, or he cannot find a slave to free then he should fast for two consecutive months fast for 60 days if he cannot do that also then 
should at least feed 60 poor people. And these are the three options that have been given for a person to pay as a penalty, as a kafara. But if a person can do the first thing, he should not jump to the second or the third. The first is freeing a slave. If he cannot do that, if he doesn't have the money or cannot find a slave, then he can go to the next option, that is fasting consecutively for 60 days. If he cannot do that, if he is unable to do that, continuously fasting for 60 days, if he fasts for a few days and then one day he doesn't fast, he should start again. He should fast consecutively for 60 days. If he doesn't have the capacity to do that, then what he can do is he can feed 60 poor people. And each poor person should be fed with approximately half sa. Each sa is equal to three handful of outstretched hand of wheat. So half sa per person or the food that is there of the land. So 60 poor people you should feed. This is the kafara, the penalty for a person who breaks a fast by having a sexual intercourse. We are all aware that the, the factors that break the fast by unanimous consensus of all the scholars are intentionally eating and drinking and uh, intercourse or ejaculation. These are by unanimous consensus uh, that uh, intentional uh, um, uh, eating and drinking, intentional. And also intentional, obviously, uh, climaxing. If it's unintentional in a dream, it is forgiven. Or if you eat and drink accidentally and you don't know, it is forgiven. Uh, the ikhtilaf comes in a number of other issues, and we'll go over them very, very quickly. Um, the majority say that withdrawing blood does not break your wudu. So this is the Hanbalis have an exception, but the other three Madhahab say no big deal. So if you have to withdraw blood, it does not break your wudu. This is the dominant majority position, and it is the uh, fasting, fasting, sorry, and it is the correct position. Also, uh, the issue of, uh, the issue of uh, injections and shots. Uh, the Fiqh Council of Mecca, which is the largest Fiqh Council of the world, this is the Rabita Alam Islam, it's called the OIC. Organization of Islamic Conferences, which is the largest conference of scholars in the entire world. They come together annually, typically after Hajj, and they uh, choose a topic and they release many, many fatawa. Almost 20 years ago, 15 years ago, they came together for medical issues, and one of the main things they discussed was injections during Ramadan, injections during fasting. And they have a very detailed fatwa, but the summary of it is that they concluded by an overwhelming majority that what breaks the fast is that which goes down the throat of any item, food, drink, or nourishment, or medicine, if it swallows into the throat, or injections that are meant to substitute food. And by food, they mean glucose, that which gives energy. Based on that, now they did say, it's best to not have any injections if you're able to get out of it. But if you're not, then it is not something that breaks the fast if you have to make an area numb for an operation or surgery, if you have to put a dye in before you enter the MRI, whatever it is, if you have to um, do uh, um, injections for uh, diabetes or whatnot, right? That is not glucose. That's something that is medicinal. So if it is an injection for a medical issue, then the Fiqh Council of, not, uh, not of North, North America also says this, but I'm saying this is the Rabat Alam Fiqh Council, which is the largest group and therefore from our perspective, the most authoritative body in the world. They have by a predominant majority said that any type of injection that is non-nutrient, and that's primarily, you know, drips or glucose type of stuff, that would be cheating. That would be trying to get energy or whatnot. Otherwise, anything else, no problem. Uh, well, they said if you can get out of it, it's, it, it, reschedule the appointment if you have. Otherwise, if you cannot, then no problem whatsoever. They also have in that fatwa that eye drops and ear drops and whatnot are forgiven. But if you taste it in your mouth, you should do madmada and get rid of it. You should put some water and just get rid of it. You should not swallow the, uh, the drops that come in. Because if you swallow, then you are taking an external substance into the throat. So what breaks the fast is not putting it in the mouth because you are allowed to do wudu and the Prophet said do madmada and istinshaq but don't do it roughly don't put it all the way back so he said do madmada and do istinshaq but do not go exaggeration so you can put something in your mouth and it will not break the wudu but if you swallow it it will break the uh, so keep on saying wudu the fast but if you swallow it it will break the fast therefore in this case uh, anything that goes into the mouth from these 
drops, you should spit out because that is an external substance. However, your saliva is internal and that is not something you need to spit out. That your own body is producing to keep your, uh, your throat and your mouth moist and that's something that is forgiven to um, do. So these are the main factors about the breaking of the wudu.